Eric Back, a naturopath from New Zealand. Thanks for coming back. We're going to talk about bacterial translocation, we're going to talk about leaky gut, and we're going to talk about autoimmune disease in this video. As many of you may be aware, I, I, my practice as a naturopathic physician uh, stopped last year in, in fact, end of November 2019, over 30 years of practice. All the years I've worked with patients, I've noticed many, if not most, all people that I've worked with have had digestive problems and many have had autoimmune problems. Back when I started practice, we didn't really use words so much as like, you know, bacterial translocation or human microbiota. We didn't even use um, leaky gut from what I remember. But the word intestinal permeability was bandied around a bit. In fact, when you went to Wikipedia years ago or sites and looked up the word words intestinal permeability, you wouldn't find anything because most people believed that it was actually a sham, like a false diagnosis. People now know that leaky gut actually exists. It's a real, real concern. Many websites now, uh, credible medical uh, websites, you'll actually read really interesting articles on what intestinal permeability or leaky gut is and how it can cause so many problems for people. Up until only recently, medical professionals have just laughed at the kind of work that people like me do, but they're not laughing anymore now. Now they're actually crying that they didn't study this kind of stuff years ago like I did. The benefits of understanding the human gut, and particularly its functional state and what happens when it becomes dysfunctional, the benefits of that are profound, particularly for people out there who are suffering. All medicine has managed to pull off for years is in fact destroy people's guts, trash them with pharmaceutical medications like antibiotics, like proton pump inhibitor drugs. Drugs that basically just wreck the gut because all they're doing is controlling a symptom, but they're destroying the quality of the patient's life in the process. Many of those doctors are in fact now interested to learn other methods that aren't destructive, that are in fact a conducive of building up health. So if we look back historically, right back to the 1920s and 30s, people knew what intestinal permeability was. They knew about leaky gut. They knew about bacteria. They may not have had the science and the DNA, the genetics that we've got today, but they certainly knew when people ate shitty food, crappy food, that you know they would end up with crappy health. And they also knew that when people ate really good food, most likely they'd end up with good health. And we still know the same today, but no one's doing anything about it. People are still eating crappy food. They're still getting bacteria in places where they shouldn't be getting them. So let's just hope with this video, I can spark your interest to really uh, get you to understand that if you establish a very solid, strong digestive health, particularly with interest in the bacteria, that your health is going to stay good for a long, long time, allowing you to avoid pharmaceutical medications and needless surgeries. Right? So, what is bacterial translocation? Well, bacteria are around us everywhere. Okay, In this room, there are lots of bacteria. They're on my face. They're on my spectacles they're everywhere we can't stop bacteria but bacteria stay generally in defined areas for example if we look at the small intestine we don't really expect much bacteria in the small intestine particularly where it's close to the stomach okay the ph is quite low it's still quite acid around that area as you go further and further down the gi tract and the ph increases it becomes more alkaline the bacteria increase when we get to the colon, we've got huge amounts of bacteria in the colon, right, compared to the small bowel. So if we look at the small intestine, it's not an area where we would expect to find lots of bacteria that should not be there, okay? Translocation occurs <clears throat> when something has disrupted, usually the first 12 to 18 inches of the small intestine, the duodenum or the duodenum, I think the Americans call it duodenum. So that area there, houses an incredible amount of immune power that the whole body really runs on. So we need a very strong functioning immune system. But as you're probably aware of read online or heard from experts that the bulk of the digestive system is in, of the immune's digestive system, and in fact, the entire body's digestive system, the bulk of it is in a very small band in the small bowel. That's the area that we really need to look after. Okay, We very have to carefully protect that area from bugs moving through that area into the lymphatic system, for example, the mesenteric lymph node system, or, or basically the lymph nodes inside the gut, a very easily <clears throat> system that can be breached where bacteria or food particles 
particularly things we call LPS, lipopolysaccharides, or cell fragment walls from gram-negative bacteria. So these are tiny little pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, basically that fit into the wall of a cell of bacteria. Now those little jigsaw pieces can break off, and they can actually move into areas where we don't want. In 2015, a study was conducted in, I think it was in China, where they had absolute proof they could see the LPS, the lipopolysaccharides, and all this cell debris being responsible for pushing up conditions like lupus SLE, uh, systemic lupus erythematosus, um, diseases like this now being linked with lipopolysaccharides, or basically cell wall fragments. When you've got a healthy cell, when you've got a healthy small intestine, not much can move through there. When that wall becomes breached, particularly through antibiotics or other pharmaceutical medications which commonly wreck the gut, you're going to get some movement there of bacteria you don't want from the gut into the immune system. Okay, and this is when you're going to set up a problem with the immune system. So it's a little bit like the Mexican wall, isn't it? You know, or the or the cold wall. We we set up walls with people, we set up all the bacteria. Well, they want to get through, and sometimes they can get through. Sometimes it can be a big breach and a lot can come through. And then we create conflict on either side. And that's what happens with autoimmunity. We get bacteria where we don't want them. We get immune systems setting up a fight. We get autoimmunity. So we get cells attacking, our healthy cells attacking our cells because they mimic something else. Crazy, isn't it? So I found an interesting study online looking at three key reasons why bacterial translocation occurs. The first one is the disruption of the ecologic GI equilibrium, allowing these bacteria to grow. So the disruption of the equilibrium can occur for many reasons. Alcohol, for example, is a key reason why people end up with a problem in the gut, because lactobacillus numbers plummet you know, when alcohol's around, and we're also going to get the increase in yeast and other kinds of things which favor that. So that's one of the key reasons. The second one is straight out increase in intestinal permeability, which is absolutely one of the biggest reasons, in my opinion, why people get autoimmune disease, is this wall's been broken down. And the third one is the problem in the host immune defense systems. So many stool tests I've seen where the person's secretory IgA, their top antibody in their gut, basically went from hero to zero, okay, it went down. Now as those numbers plummet, of course, and then as the gut permeability increases, you're a sitting duck for a disease. You want to get the IgA up. You'll do that with probiotics. You'll do that with enzymes. You'll do that with good food. You want to get the bad guys down. You'll do that with grapefruit seed extract, oregano, garlic, many other things. Check out my Canzita range. It's why I designed Canzita, exactly for complex chronic cases like autoimmunity. The Canzita remove works by cleaning up the gut. It removes the bad stuff. The restore works by building the good stuff. The enzymes help to break food down so you can feed the healthy cells more. You can grow bacteria, okay? And of course, the probiotics there add to adjust the pH and allow a proper equilibrium to occur in the gut, exactly where we want it. So remove and restore were designed for that purpose. Rebuild helps to, of course, supply deficiencies, which are quite apparent with many people. So we don't really want a disruption. So if we can avoid pharmaceutical medications, if we can eat good food, if we can understand the link between stress in our gut, those three things are key, okay? Good food, understanding stress, really understanding this intestinal permeability and how you can repair that small bowel. And you can, anyone can repair their small intestine, especially if they start improving their diet, improving their lifestyle, slowly adding some cultured and fermented foods in there when they can, throwing diet books out the window and understanding that there is no guru that's going to cure you. You need to work out your own diet based on your ecology and your gut, which differs from mine. But slowly but surely, you'll notice when you start doing these things, your gut will get better and stronger and stronger. Now, you may not believe what I'm going to say, but I've certainly seen autoimmunity reversed in several cases. I've seen several cases of rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, and diseases like that, even lupus, where the person slowly, slowly, slowly put a lid on their symptoms and slowly backed out of that condition. Now, of course, if there's gross pathology, like if you've got triple joints from rheumatoid, you're not really going to turn those around. But if you've been diagnosed with autoimmunity in the early stages, 
most important advice I can give you is get a stool test done ASAP. Get a comprehensive digestive stool test done through either Genova, okay, or through Doctors Data. There are other labs you may want to work with. Please get the stool test done to see what type of bacteria are in your gut. What's translocated? Have you got a lack of beneficials? Have you got an increasing amount of yeasts or bacteria you don't want there, which are linked with autoimmunity, like Citrobacter, like Pseudomonas, for example, Klebsiella, these bacteria are linked with autoimmunity. So if you find them in the stool test high and you've got autoimmunity, please do something about it because you'll be surprised on how well you can feel in spite of your doctor telling you that you'll have this condition for life. That's a load of nonsense. You don't have to believe that kind of stuff. But you need to be proactive and get on to it yourself. So I hope that gives you a bit of information today on bacterial translocation and its relevance with autoimmunity. If the bacteria stay where they're supposed to be, okay, in the lumen or actually inside the digestive tract and don't get spilt over. If the person's lifestyle is conducive, if their cortisol levels don't go shooting up all over the place in their epinephrine levels, their adrenaline and stress, because these increase also leaky gut. If the person's eating good food on a daily basis and understands the relevance of preferably not taking antibiotics all the time, then this person's in a great position to really improve their health and to slow the progression, if not reverse that of autoimmune disease. And that's my wish with this video, that it can happen for you. It's happened for a lot of my patients, it can happen for you too. Have a great day and thanks for tuning in.